Rick Pasek, the Flatfish Fanatic, and welcome to my tying bench. Uh, today we'll be tying a, um, a fly that's one material. Uh, fairly simple fly. Um, Got to be a little gentle with it because it's all using CDC. Uh, the whole fly. Actually, sorry, I lied. There's actually two materials because I do use some goose biots in it. Um, but uh, the the rest of it is all uh, um, uh, as an, I use goose biots as an attractor. The rest of it's all all CDC. Um, I've used this pattern in with different materials. I've used marabou and other stuff uh, in the past, um, and I've tied a few with CDC and I've used them and they've they've worked really well. Um, I don't even know. 100% what the fish are taking them for whether it's just because it's buggy or if it's being taken for a small leech or if it's being taken for a scud I'm not actually sure but it is uh, an effective pattern and uh, well worth having in your box so here is what we will be tying this here like I said it's pretty well all CDC except for obviously the thread and the goose by it on either side that's it Right, and the goose bites more for a hot spot than anything else. So, all right, so let's get started. So, today I will be using a Hens BL599 in a size 10. I will be using some CDC in this is a, like an olive green. Um, I tie them with olive green and, and a little bit of white. I tie them in yellow. I, I tie them in a bunch of different colors, but and in black. But black and green seem to be the the absolute key ones. So uh, we will start with that. We'll go with the green. Um, and then I'm using uh, some Zemperfly goose biots. They're really, really. Uh, I like I like the color in them. They're really bright. So. So. A little bit of wax on my thread there just get her started bring her all the way to the back here and it's up to you I actually don't have it in my vice very well there sorry guys there we go I didn't actually have it in so all right so I'll just get it back to, to the back here now I will come back forward just a little bit doesn't really matter that much because you, you won't really see this, but you want to have enough that this will, once you've tied this into the back, that this can fold right over. So I'm going to tie it in about there. So I'm going to cut it just a little short, just a little bit off. And then I'm going to tie this stuff. And I, in the natural curve of the feather, I want it naturally curving up. So I'm just going to tie this stuff down. I want the stem right on top of the hook. And leave it buggy. You want that nice and buggy. So now I've already taken a CDC feather and I've loaded it into my stone flow, stone flow uh, holder, my clip, my material clip. You can use a Marc Pettijon one, you can use stone flow. Actually, if you're if for bigger flies and stuff, I found these at the dollar store. They are absolutely really, really good, actually. They're nice and tight. They work really well. Um, but they're they're quite a bit bigger, so and I don't need that much material here. So, so I'm just gonna flatten my thread out. This is a Zemperfly Nano Silk that I'm using in a, just in a white. Um, again, you can use it in a in a green or in whatever color. Um, I tie it in white and then I, I can color it whatever color head I want at the end then. So now that it's in there, I just want to make sure that because I want this body being pretty buggy, right? I'm just spinning that up. Let it go. Again, give it a good spin. Let it go. Nice and buggy. I'm going to hold this material back. Fold it back, fold it back, and it's almost open turns that I'm doing here, right? I'm, I'm not doing touching turns. There we go. Okay, then I'm going to take this feather, and this is the part you got to be a little careful because this, you don't want it to really, you want it to crack but not break. So you're kind of pushing this forward, stroke all the material back that you can, 
It's almost like a wing case, right? Like a shell back that I'm using it for. Now these flies are definitely not indestructible. They are, I mean, it's CDC. CDC um, does not, is not the strongest material out there, right? So um, they're quick to tie. Um, they're easy to tie, uh, but they're, uh, they're also not the, like I said, they're, they're a couple of fish and they're done. Especially if you're going after toothy fish like browns or brookies or tigers or anything, right? So, okay, so now I'm just going to hold my thread tight, pull off my stem there. Just going to get my little brush. Just make sure I don't have... I'll clean out my brush. Uh, make sure I got no feathers trapped. Okay, and you can see it's kind of acting like... Can see in there it's kind of acting like a bit of a shell back right that uh that center stem so righty so just leave that back then i'm going to flatten out my thread again split my thread you can do a dubbing loop here or uh, but you have to either do a dubbing loop or thread because i mean you can rip the cdc off the stem and then just dub it on like you normally would, but you don't get this legginess that you want from, from what I'm doing here. So I've got another one prepared. Let it go. I want to look, the more tips, the better. So your butt sections, if you can, have them as short as possible in here. But once you've got it in here, it's a little tough to, to play with. So you gotta kind of do that in your holder because once you uh, start trying to push CDC back, it, it, it yeah, <laughs> this stuff is so, so soft, right? That's why I love using CDC. I mean, the slightest little wind, the slightest little movement of, of, uh, of air, anything will just get these, these, these fibers just a moving, right? So, so just go man back, stroke back, stroke back, just, and coming forward, just keep it, keep on stroking it back. Leave a little tiny space in the front here for a little head and, and stuff. Again, get in there. Stroke all this back. Okay, take your goose by it. And it depends on what you're wanting here. I like tying them in like that so the curve is going in. But sometimes you can even, you can tie them in like that so the curve is facing out. It, it, it's up to you. Like I said, I prefer the look of it. Um, facing in. Now I want to do, I want it to be about as long as where the barb of the hook would be if there was a barb. So I'm going to lay it in about like that and a little bit on an up angle. I'll show you guys once I've got this tied in on this side. You're almost following the contour of the curve of the hook. So you see how that's kind of well, you'll see when I tie in the other side. It's a little difficult to show it upside down. So, so this one, I'm just going to match the length, which is about there. And you see how I'm kind of matching the how the how the hook goes on an angle, and I'm going to actually be up a little bit above that. So again, I'm just going to tie that in. I just want to make sure. Yeah, that looks pretty good. It almost creates like I'll show you guys from the top in a second. It almost creates like a, almost like a tent. See. That's what, that's the effect you want. Alrighty, now, if you tie that in five, six, eight times really tight and hold tight on your, your thread, don't let go of your thread and just, you can give these bias a pull right off and that way it's nice and clean. You don't have to cut them. Okay, just build a little bit of a head up here. Nothing huge. Get my um, whip finishing tool that I buried. Gonna give that a three four turn whip finish and then I'm gonna grab my Sally Hansons. I like doing it now because again when you try to do this after um, with CDC if there's any little fibers they just get attracted to the glue it's, yeah it just makes a mess and then this stuff doesn't move very well so I just put a tiny bit of glue right on the uh, right on the thread here 
and it build up a little bit of a head. And see there, I even caught one doing it this way. So, let's see, it shouldn't be too bad. I might be able to just burn that one off. Or... Cause you definitely want movement, movement, movement. I mean, that's what CDC is all about. Right, it's the movement and the sheen that it picks up with the, uh, with the, the air, right? It picks up air in those little tiny, those little, you can see the little tiny barbules. Let's see if I can even point at them. Let's see, I don't know if I can, but the little barbules that are like right in there, all those little tiny barbules coming off of the main shafts, right off of each one of these shafts, that stuff just picks up air and picks up light like you wouldn't believe. And then this stuff really flows really nicely in the water. So uh, I'll fish these usually fairly shallow, um, like in deeper waters. I, you know, water is up to 20 feet deep, but I uh, usually keep them um, on, a, on a sink tip or a uh, floating line. Um, it, usually a sink tip is what I do, a, a type one sink tip. I want these down five feet and less. Um, and I really slow, just a figure eight retrieve, almost like a scud. Um, every once in a while, I'll give it a pull, 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 but kind of a, a retrieve like a, between a scud and a chronomid. So you want that real slow take um, um, retrieve, and every once in a while, I'll give it a twitch. And that movement of that of that CDC will move really well. So now if I wanted to, I could take like a, uh, a felt pen and just give the uh, give that that white thread if I want to, right? Give that white thread a bit of green. Or I can take it and make it orange. Um, the other thing I could have done is I could have used uh, orange thread and made a hot spot or, or bright green thread and made a hot spot up there. But uh, yeah, so that's the, uh, that's the finished fly. Alrighty, well, I hope you enjoyed that. If you did, please give her a thumbs up. If you have subscribed already, thank you very much. If you haven't, please consider subscribing, smash that notification bell, and we'll see you in the next time video. Tie lines, everyone.